All right, seven o'clock, I'd like to call to order the special meeting of the Water Police Select Board on Monday, the 31st of July. And I'd like to start again by uh, recognizing everyone that's been working on the flood recovery. I think uh, you've done a remarkable job. Uh, the, the place looks relatively great compared to uh, other towns in central Vermont. And uh, just like to recognize the tremendous effort that everyone's put forth to uh, be able to make mm -hmm. And the first uh, item is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Any opposed? Any abstentions? We have an approved agenda. Uh, next, we have the consent agenda items. Uh, we did have a meeting last uh, Friday and we've had a few other emergency meetings uh, to discuss issues uh, related to uh, emergency management resulting from the flood. Uh, those minutes are available. Um, and uh, then there's a couple of other permits. But uh, do I have a motion on the consent agenda? I move to approve the items listed on the consent agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, consent agenda is approved. Next, I'd like to uh, have a uh, update on the flood recovery efforts. And the uh, first item, uh, sub item, is the appointment of the flood recovery coordinator. Do I have a motion? You want to do discussion first? Um, okay. Or I'll, I'll make a, if we want to do a motion for discussion, I would move to appoint Tom Drake as Waterbury's flood recovery coordinator. I'll second that motion. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, further discussion. In the background. <laughs> 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 That's not how you're speaking. Um, I guess. I'm happy to start and then I'll defer to Tom or others, I guess I would say. Sure. Um, want to give a big acknowledgement to Liz Schlegel, who's not in the room tonight, but um, her, Liz, myself, Danny, numerous town staff. We have to thank all the town staff again for all their support. Karen, who's been fielding all sorts of phone calls at the front desk um, and many people, as we can see still from the stuff in the room, we've been doing things with dehumidifiers that are rented and equipment and supplies and mobilizing volunteers. Um, volunteers are incredible. Again, can't say enough about the folks in Waterbury who are willing to show up and help. Um, it does also require coordination to match both those who are in need and could use volunteer support to those people who want to help. Um, so that's a role that's been done in a variety of interim ways in the kind of two to three weeks imminently after an emergency by people with other full-time jobs <laughs> um, and it was not a sustainable model so recognizing both that needing to have a point person who can um, be in charge of particularly for water break candidly as we move into this next phase of more long-term recovery um, and recognizing that there still is needs and places that volunteers can plug in um, but also a variety of long-term municipal projects um, and recognizing that many of us who have been doing the work cannot do it for the foreseeable future. Um, we would love to hire someone. <laughs> so I guess I would say um, Liz brought up Tom. He's been already, I think, hit the ground running and been in and out of the municipal offices for the better part of this whole week. Uh, staff volunteer shifts this weekend. Um, both lives on Randall Street and knows the community um, from his prior role. So I think would be an incredible fit. Um, and we'll say just personally, thank you for your willingness and interest in this position um, if you choose to accept it, because um, I think it's great to just recognize capacity as a piece of this puzzle. There's a lot of different pieces and we're figuring it out, but having someone who can help day to day and um, have those of us who have been answering the water rate help email less stress that someone is going to email with something really concerning and urgent and none of us are going to see it until we're out of work at the end of the day. Um, I think it's a really important role. Um, would say just we've talked with Tom, we've talked with Liz and others, and would certainly want to hear from him and others, but that's some general to you. Tom, do you want to add? Hey, Tom. I'll say it's nice that there's someone who's um, a member of the community been deeply involved in the recovery effort and clearly has the skill set to do this, so it makes 
everyone's life easier when someone that steps up and is what we do the job. So it's, uh, I think it's a great choice. And I think, um, I think again, it just makes our life really easy to have Tom here. Um, Tom Drake, do you want to talk about your experience uh, and your interest well, in the yeah, position? Yeah, um, Alyssa, one thing you didn't mention was, you know, I was one of those two at nine o'clock three weeks ago tonight, you know, who had eight feet of water in my basement. So I can relate from the inside on what it feels like to get flooded and Irene in, you know, now again 12 years later. So, um, you know, I think, you know, just being the principal of Prospect Middle School for 14 years, I know a lot of people and, and I know where the roads are and stuff like that. So I just happen to be in a place where I have the time right now. Um, but, but I can see even, you know, from today, we just had a few volunteers and, you know, our needs list is getting shorter, but changing to more kind of like you said, long-term thinking you know, the role is going to change. So, you know, the, the few of you three weeks ago tomorrow who just like jumped in and ready fire aimed it, you know, was amazing. And I think um, Danny and Alyssa, you were here this week and you're like, oh, it's actually calm around here. <laughs> like, yeah, it hasn't been like this last three weeks. We're like, no. Um, so it is starting to, you know, um, um, fade out. So what Tom, um, Elle and I talked about was you know, this is not a full-time job. It's uh, it's not as needed. And he said, no, just make sure you don't milk it. I said, trust me, Tom, I've got, I've got to find my own job. And I've got like still like people visiting my basement and stuff like that. So I'm not doing that. Um, so yeah, I can see it being um, busier times than others. But I also can see it being, you know, when that conversation shifts to more mitigation, more, you know, getting involved in that kind of thing too. So I think it'll be a you know, a piecemeal part-time job, but and again, I'm reading the email and organizing the stuff, so I will, stuff won't slip through the cracks, right? And I don't think it did before because of the, uh, the efforts that went out here, but it would be easy, too, if you had a whole bunch of cooks in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. so, makes sense to me. Yeah. And uh, Lou Schlegel did a, a great job uh, in the coordination effort. Uh, left to go on family vacation to Cape Cod. She took with her um, a list that we received from the state of uh, 211. Uh, people that had called in on 211, uh, and there were Waterbury residents uh, indicating that they had been impacted. And did she have time to transfer that 211 data to the uh, our grand list data? She, yeah, she crosswalked them and highlighted the ones on the 211 list that yeah, you know, and she made notes like, you know, we talked to the person, but we, we didn't check the house, or mm -hmm. we, um, you know, didn't check either the person or the house. So, so we're following up on that list. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a big list at two on one. I think mm -hmm. it, it, you know, we didn't push it as hard, I understand, as we could have, but I think it's a good clearinghouse for the future. Right. And just to say out loud, like, again, some of those more long-term tasks are saying, like, you just did things as they came up, but getting those more final numbers about who and where were impacted and to what extent. And that's a lot of what's in the two on one data of some folks are, you know, we're not saying there's an imminent, you know, need for support at my home, but I got X number of inches, you know, in the basement up in the center or something like that. So being able to tabulate all of that information um, is just one of the many things that it would be wonderful to have staff support for moving forward. Just, just learned um, in the last day or so that um, there is a 211 app that's being rolled out that we'll be able to get where you can see people, um, you know, essentially fill out their information and get to see it in real time. So that's be hugely helpful for the next emergency we run into and hopefully helpful in the next few weeks. Okay. All right, any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, Tom, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you for Thank your you. service. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for volunteering. We okay. appreciate it. Yeah, one, one, one side note, I talked to a homeowner today of a house on Union Street that, that the three weeks ago tonight, the resident um, who was just paying rent, I think he lived there, just left. And so the place has been locked up since, you know, so it hasn't been touched. So I think, you know, I hear a lot of, oh, water is so far ahead. And I think in general we are because maybe it was Irene's experience or we have smart and, and, and hardworking people here. I don't know what. But 
you know, there are still houses that are on. So I'm meeting that homeowner at noon on Saturday, and it'd be interesting to see what you mm. know what goes on, and, you know, because that's been sitting there for three weeks now. Yikes! Can't be good. Um. Kane, you had uh, some recommendations uh, on uh, yes. steps to be taken. Um, not for the immediate, right? We now have Tom, Drake, thankfully, to oversee our immediate cleanup. Um, my suggestion would be that the board consider uh, creation of a committee um, who would be tasked with preparing us for next time. Um, outline, you know, not it as clear as I could have made it, um, but essentially their job would be <clears throat> to get us ahead with supplies, get us ahead with um, preparations, and then when we need to go into recovery mode, they could act in the manner that our current flood recovery team had been doing with gathering volunteers and dispatching them to the needed areas. So wait, there's going to be another time? <laughs> we, I think it would be... Sure. In a hundred years. I, I just consider, you know, with two, 200, 200 year floods in the last 12 years and the acceleration of climate change, we can expect this to happen again and we need to be prepared for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike. I think, I think Kane's idea is a good one. I have kind of, I was on Senator Sanders' phone call and I tried to talk more about as much as some communities are really suffering now, but we need to, just, every community needs to talk about resilience as much as they do about, you know, immediate cleanup and, and recovery. Uh, I would, I don't know if he would be willing to do it, but Usually the emergency management director would probably, should be probably leading a little bit of that charge, Gary Dillon. Um, I don't know, you know, I know none of us probably have spoken to him, but, you know, that's probably the first place I would think of asking, you know, having, you know, I know being also an emergency management coordinator, I've taken the emergency management director's course, you know, he has a lot of that background already. Absolutely. And that to me would be a natural. Oh, I'm, I'm not suggesting that we leave anybody off the table. Right. I'm suggesting that we create a committee who works with the emergency coordination that we already have in place for natural disasters specifically. Right. And I think that's one of the reasons why we did so well this time, because I hate to say this, you know, we didn't probably want to have the experience we had with, you know, Irene the first time, but I think that taught us a lot of lessons which we brought to this recovery effort, and I think we've done a lot better. Mm -hmm. A lot better than a lot of the other communities I've seen. Um, so I'm wondering if uh, perhaps uh, Kane, you and Mike could uh, flesh out your idea a little bit more and bring it to the next meeting? Sure. I can do that. I'd like to yeah. it down sometime. Sure. Absolutely. All right. I don't know if I need a motion for that, but uh, I think we put it on the agenda for, yeah, the, we can next week. Agenda for next week. All right. Uh, anything else before we get into dumpsters and material pickup and services? Um, I think I have just a, I have just a couple of notes just for general updates. And Tom, now I'm feeling outdated because now Tom's been here and I wasn't. I haven't been here for almost 48 whole hours. Um, but some notes are just, you know, that was covered is the, the recovery efforts moving largely forward from that big scale to some smaller main priorities such as mold prevention and mitigation um, in individual citizens ongoing needs like Tom mentioned specific houses that have specific needs, um, data collection reporting and then looking to the future. Um, I think we have like I love Kay and your suggestion and I think including the right people is really important and we have some emergency management stuff written, but a lot of what happened uh, was because it exists in people's brains, because Liz Schlegel has done this before, because Bob Butler has done this before, because Bill Sheplick was on the street and ran into us. And so I think what's going to be really important is getting what's in people's brains onto paper or the computer or whatever it is so that it's there for the next group um, and not depending on, on that um, 
same same kind of idea. Um, we also started to encourage send uh, volunteers to go and help in other communities who need it and who aren't where we are just yet. Um, and uh, if anybody who's listening or sees this is interested, you can reach out to Tom or to WaterburyHelp at gmail.com. Um, and just continuing to say out loud that the FEMA Disaster Recovery Center set up at the Armory open 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week. Um, and then, Tom, are you still uh, looking for a couple of dehumidifier locations or you've got, you know? I think we're looking for two. Okay, so if, I'm just, so that it's in the minutes, in the paper, et cetera, um, the rented or borrowed dehumidifiers, the big, big ones, uh, if you have one, be in touch. If you haven't yet, because there are still a couple that we're not sure whose basements they're in. Um, and a note today, Monday is the last day for appliances at the Stanley Wasson lot. So no more appliances, tires, metal, et cetera, should be brought to the Stanley Wasson lot. It's going to be cleaned up and municipal use of that lot is officially ending. Um, and then that brings us to dumpsters, et cetera. Um, Danny, I had a question. There's uh, what looks like a, uh, uh, a setup for a skating rink or something at the end of that lot that blocks off the exit. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like it's going like, towards the horseshoe again? Yeah. I saw, I don't know what it oh, is. Oh, no, I they, haven't They've been taken there. the accumulated uh, silt and created berms all around it and <laughs> put down a liner uh, as though it's going to become a skating rink when the weather changes a bit. I have no um, idea. But I just did, uh, didn't know if that was... Uh, Permanent or what the? My guess is plans? one of the two Toms should call buildings and general services, but I don't. I don't know. No <laughs> I idea. Don't know that it's okay. a municipal right. initiative. All right. And um, I should just add, I did uh, participate in the uh, FEMA discussion for uh, towns uh, this afternoon. Uh, they went through how towns apply for assistance uh, for any project uh, costing more than $3,800. Uh, and uh, so we'll be, uh, we certainly have a, one project right on uh, Winooski Street. That's liable to go beyond that uh, and probably some others as well. So uh, probably getting an update on that at a subsequent meeting. Um, and how about the other uh, dumpsters? Are they going? Uh, are they done as of uh, this week, or? So that's what uh, we're working to vote. I think the vote is for tonight. We're this weekend. I think we're down as of this weekend. I think we're down to two. I think the rest were taken. That was the information I got, but I haven't had a confirmation that it was done. Yeah, um, Randall Streets is gone. Okay, so I think we're down to either one or two, and then our goal is to vote as a board on. Uh, how much longer we want to fund having those one or two here. And I, I don't have the update on if it's one or two, sorry. It's two, there's still two. Perfect, thank you, Karen. Okay. And I think Bob Butler's recommendation was to go to the end of this week. To the end of this week, right. Which uh, seems like a reasonable discussion based on what I'm observing. Tom, mm -hmm. maybe you have something to add? Yeah, I think that's right. There's one in Armory, one on Elm Street now. I think another week should be fine. Okay. All right. Um, do I have Before a motion? We've already gotten the one out of the cider house. Yeah, or that would have been included. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then I move to uh, continue mm -hmm. town funding of the two dumpsters in town through Friday, August. Anyone? Uh, Friday? Friday's the fourth. Or for, so should I say that or Saturday? I don't know when they would get picked up. But I want you to make it through Saturday. Okay, through Saturday, August fifth. Do I hear a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing As none. As a general statement for the public, they are for flood impacted folks. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. They, they Thank are you. a municipal resource that was, if you read the after I read the report, like the one thing we did, did really well, we got the dumpsters right away. So we're keeping it up and recognizing Tom Drake already shared that there are still folks who are flood impacted who have not fully cleaned out. So just that is the purpose of what those dumpsters are for. And we appreciate everyone respecting and using them in that manner. Through the fit. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> okay, we've got two dumpsters until Saturday. Yes. I just had a quick question that about the, the vote just now. When um, Danny mentioned the appliances um, being finished at Stanley Lawson, you said Monday. Do you mean today, Monday, or next Monday? Today, so Monday. Today they're done. Yeah, okay. it is done. Okay. They've got them all okay. in the and dumpster and gone. 
And to your knowledge, the slurry pit thing, I've got some pictures of that. It's not town, it's, it's a state thing. Unless Tom, do you have, is it public work? Are they doing it? It's not us. I was I, I talked to Bill Woodruff and he said that the slurry that was coming out of those Vactor trucks when they were sucking the mud out of the houses that that was being stored down by the ice center right. um, from our public works department. So I was surprised yeah. when I saw that there was this other area over there by the appliances thing. I thought, yeah. Oh, is, are they putting it there? But maybe that's the state that's using it, that's doing it. I don't know. So we'll we'll get yeah. we'll, we'll get yeah. a clarification on we'll that. That's all about. Okay. <laughs> Um, and the, the two dumpsters that are left are remain one on Elm Street, and what was the other one, did you say? Right. Oh, I'm sure today, one would be on Union. Okay. That came from Bob Butler. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and Roger, you just want to say out loud, there's also hazardous waste now in Middlesex for anyone who needs it run by the state, correct? Okay. Uh, the, I don't have any information on that. But okay. Yeah, the old police barracks. I have that in the in the latest update on the, yeah. the website. I passed it along. It's at the former police state police barracks uh -huh. um, for uh, residences and for businesses to bring hazardous trash. Okay. Um, that just opened a couple days ago. So just this side of exit nine. On yes. Road to the... Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right, uh, if we're done with that, uh, I think I'll open up the uh, public comment. Uh, this is an opportunity for anyone that has a comment that is not uh, covered in the warned agenda uh, to add something. Yes, sir. I'd like to bring up the issue we're having on Waterbury Center right now. On can, you, can you come sit up here? Oh, yeah, come yeah. sit up here. Introduce, yeah. introduce yourself on the record, please. Uh, my name is Chris Lackey. Mm -hmm. um, I live on 17 Hunger Mountain Road in Waterbury Center. Um, so how do you talk about this? Um, so basically, in Waterbury, we have an active arsonist right now. He's been released from prison. Since he's been released from prison, we've had to have our fire department go put out two fires. One was at the gentleman's residence last night. Another burned down his neighbor's shed. Um, I obviously am scared, um, as my neighbors are, which is why they're not here. Um, and the bigger problem we're experiencing is the state police aren't responding. Last night at 2.30 a.m., I believe, um, I called 911, um, reported that my neighbor had left his house, was beating his car to death, um, basically just violating all of his terms of release, and the police chose not to respond. Um, given there was a fatal crash in East Montpelier, and there are two state troopers um, that cover Washington County, which is large. That's from Roxbury to Waterbury. Um, I guess what I'm here for tonight is to reconsider having some sort of police here in Waterbury. I know that's nothing that can happen in this meeting. Um, it's going to take further discussion, but. This is definitely a huge issue, and people's lives and their houses are in danger. Um, the state police are doing all they can. I've been in touch with everyone I know. Um, and I'd basically just like to ask you guys what your thoughts on this are and how you might see proceeding. How do we make our community safe? How do we support the state police? You know, is it signing a contract with the sheriff's department? What is it? Because right now, it's not safe. And the other thing is, is media attention to this. I guarantee most of you in this room hadn't heard of it, or at least hadn't heard that he's still active and is at home tonight. And we will be calling the police later tonight again because he'll burn something else again tonight and I'm his neighbor. Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, we do uh, empathize with your situation, uh, and uh, I at least was aware that uh, this is under active investigation. Uh, my understanding is that uh, he's being called in uh, tomorrow, uh, which may not be fast enough uh, for everyone, um, but uh, I guess my impression was that uh, the state police and prosecutors are moving forward with this as fast as they can. Um, now, 
again, that's that's my personal understanding of it. And there may be others. Tom, do you have an update on this? Can't hear you. So our yep. daytime trooper uh, officer Riegler, um focused on this today um, in preparing for a court hearing tomorrow. Um, so I believe the hearing tomorrow is about conditions of release. So, um, you know, maybe that he's found that he's violated the conditions of release, in which case he may not be at large, which might be a good outcome right now. Um, now the, the reality is when, when you said there's only two state police in central Vermont, um, that's entirely true. And I think that's been true for a lot of years um, for the nighttime. Um, our contract with the state runs through uh, June 30th of next year. So we'll actually start talking to them pretty soon about, about extension. Um, it's essentially, um, it's two officers that split shifts um, for about $400,000 to give you context. I and mean, that number really hasn't changed in three years. So, um, if the state were to add trooper, if we were to add service to the contract, um, you know, consider 200, 220 grand somewhere in there, the cost for one additional uh, trooper to be assigned. Um, we could talk to the county sheriffs um, that additional coverage. I'm not casting aspersions at our county sheriff, but, but county sheriffs in general for a number of years now have um, been the subject of a lot of headlines. Um, for a lot of negative reasons, so I'm leery about uh, really furthering our relationship there. Um, still right now, um, I've, I've tried to talk to Still a little bit about considering maybe a contractual option with Waterbury to provide some services, and they're down three officers right now. Um, so we, and everyone is down officers right now, and the state police are are are, are as, as small as they've been in many many years. So, um, I'm not sure we have much ability forgetting about the money for a minute. I just don't think the officers are out there. If you gave me a if you gave me a if you doubled the town's budget, send me and told me to create a police force. Um, Money, no object whatsoever, and still be an awfully hard task to accomplish right now, just because of general lack of police. Uh, everyone is is paying officers right now more than, way more than they ever envisioned just a few years ago. And hopefully, you know, the market is the market. People will respond to that, and more people want to become officers. But it's going to take a lot of time to to sort this out and get us in a position where we could actually increase our police services, whether it's on our own or through a contract. Uh, Chris. So I had, uh, was on a project a week and a half ago, and a state trooper stopped by looking for a gentleman. Uh, he, had, he didn't know if we'd seen this particular guy. And I had, a, my son and I both had a two hour conversation with this police officer. He told us some things that were pretty upsetting about the internal issues going on in, within Vermont State Police right now. He told me that they would prefer that he just go hide somewhere for the day. He said, if I didn't do nothing all day long, they would be happier about it. He said, the justice system doesn't want to deal with prosecuting. It's all about the whole last couple of years since George Floyd's death. It has just imploded uh, this, the policing system to the point where the people in the higher ups don't want to rock the boat at all. So we're paying for coverage and I said to him, so my tax dollars are going to nothing, basically. Uh, and then let alone the things I've witnessed ongoing 
either on the interstate with people just absolutely flying. You never see police presence. We talked about the number of state police officers that they're down from where they were. Uh, and the, the inability to recruit more. Um, they did just hire a few more, and his concern was that they're now hiring people who are not qualified just to fill the hole. So from the sound of things, this problem isn't going to get better. And to spend money on more police officers, I kind of question what we're going to get out of that uh, cost if, if they're told to basically stand down. Yeah, and I can support that too. Um, I spent most of my day today talking with Officer Riegler um, in Berlin mm -hmm. and at my office in Montpelier, and this guy is completely beat up. I mean, he's like, they gave me a search warrant. I found everything. I thought it was over. They found more than they thought they would find. This guy's now really? back out. Mm -hmm. And he's so disheartened, he doesn't even like want to be there. Um, talking to the 911 operator last night was like, basically she said to me, well, Waterbury chose not to have a police department. Um, you know, that's kind of, unfortunately, the attitude right now, like, hey, we don't have enough resources. Um, we just can't help. Um, tough. And I mean, I think we all kind of grew up as kids like, oh, call the police and they'll come and save you in a violent situation. And, you know, unfortunately, that's not true anymore. Um, and I guess the other thing I would ask is the select board to put their minds together to figure out what we can do for these families if this guy doesn't get put away tomorrow because it won't end until something catastrophic happens. And that's, you can talk to Officer Regler, that's what he told me. Um, yeah, well, again, um, it is a, a, a terribly unfortunate situation. Uh, based on what I've heard, uh, the evidence is pretty convincing that uh, the individual has uh, uh, run afoul of uh, the conditions of release, I'd be very surprised if uh, this individual is still at large tomorrow. Um, but we will follow up. Yeah, I don't want to disagree with that right now, but I will tell you a story that Officer Regler told me that is mm -hmm. true. So not to bring up a sort of subject, but uh, the Jody Herring trial, when the DCF worker got shot, mm -hmm. um, her daughter soon got in trouble after that. Um, her daughter violated her terms of release 70 times, and they dismissed all of them. So just so everybody's aware that even though somebody does violate their conditions of release, even though it says they can be brought back to jail, the likely bet is that that won't happen. They'll get another 8 by 10 piece of paper, and that says what they can and can't do, and they'll go throw it away when they get home. No, I'm not saying that is what's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm saying don't not read about it as a community. I mean, you know, this guy's mm -hmm. kind of experiencing a crisis himself, but um, there's a chance that he might not. So. Well, and uh, I'd just like to note that uh, the press does play a role. I'd like to congratulate uh, Lisa Scagliotti for covering this, uh, bring it to the attention of the public, uh, so that 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 may indeed have an influence on the results. Yeah, Mike. I have a ton of sympathy for you. Um, I used to be until it, it wound up folding at the beginning of this year. Uh, I was one of various representatives to the Central Vermont State Police Advisory Board, and the State Police Advisory Board. A lot of people weren't, yeah, I was showing up, but a lot of people weren't showing up, I think. And we hear from the police that they're being beat down. You know, as, as you kind of said, as Chris kind of said, I feel, you know, we're in an environment that sometimes policing's not popular until, as you said, when you need something. And I don't know in the short run what we can do other than hopefully the legal process 
will happen and this person will will be arrested if he, if he's uh, you know a date consider a danger to the community and i think you know we would support that as to long term what we can you know short term i don't think we could only rely because we have our contract with the state police i think long term yes it may be the subject of conversation as to you know and i think it's discouraging from some of the things that i heard is that maybe they're being advised by higher ups is not doing things i think that's just i, I know because they're being beat down that they don't want to do things but i think that's a role of what the police do and i think you know we as the public need to support state police local police department i know i've spoken to the Chief of Police, I guess he's now Chief of Police in, in, in Burlington, they're discouraged. And I don't blame, you know, there's just not enough, you know, I don't know if there will ever be enough policing to discourage some of the people who are just doing no good. And I don't know, maybe we, I think there used to be neighborhood watches. Maybe that's possibly a part of solution, to have neighborhood watches, you know, to patrol you know, Waterbury's, and it's a way to, you know, help keep our streets safe. But otherwise, I just feel for you, and long term, it's going to be, a, it's a big, big problem, you know, and with the fentanyl problem and stuff like that, it's just going to get worse. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Ken. Um, maybe it would behoove us, uh, directed at Tom, um, to reach out to Stowe again and see if, what it would take to see if they can answer calls from Waterbury Center. Uh, uh, Police they, Department. They've got, a they've got a manager, and I can uh, deal with him a little bit. Um, they're just out of the capacity right now. But, and, uh, I forget how many officers they have, but I think it's something like 12 to 15, so being down three is a lot. I mean, it's pretty troubling to me that at this point in time, it, seems to me the only thing that we can convey is sympathy. Uh, you know, I, I express to that same police officer as I express to every police officer that I see, one of you guys are gonna all get together, go in and lay your badge down at the state house and walk out the door. Say, we're done until things change. It's gonna take that kind of reaction before, and, and it's, it, you convey sympathy until you're one of us or the victim. Well, I can tell you right now, I'm not just going to stand by and become the victim. It ain't happening. And uh, it, it, it just blows my mind that we're continuing allowing this to fester and get worse and get worse and get worse. Um, yeah, listen. I just say, it is an incredibly challenging situation, and I'm so sorry, and thank you for coming and bringing it to our attention. As a select board member, the tools we have is we set a budget, we do contract for policing services. That is in our budget, that is a choice made to have more coverage. I recognize it's not a department and maybe that dispatcher thought that wasn't enough, but we have tried to provide additional support so that the existing state police officers aren't as resourced. I'm hearing it's not enough, I, I hear you. And right now the solution we have is that I have our manager saying that the officer we do pay for spent all day trying to work on this, that he's tried to call every neighboring department and that he's on the line. So I really am sorry because uh, for me tonight, that is what we can do. We can yeah. say that we have tried to pay for this. We have tried to call everyone we can call and please stay in touch with Tom so that if it's not getting worse, we can revisit it. But I am sorry that that's the tools I feel I have right now to address this. Yeah, I guess um, to Kane's point, I guess I would ask i think there's a lot of really great people in waterbury and just having like a community watch i mean if something like a dangerous person is released in the community you know we call on our volunteers hey can you guys drive around town you know this is the person's conditions of the release if you observe something report it i don't know the legalities of that but um yeah seems like something would be better than nothing or at least trying something would show and give an example for maybe other people to follow um, yeah and when we did have the state police in here uh, just uh, a couple months ago i asked what can we do to support you and he said, said exactly that uh, report to us everything you see because we don't see everything we can't do everything 
Uh, so I do think that that would be one measure that we could take. And just to close, or in terms of just adding the tools that Alyssa was talking about, and Tom mentioned, you know, when the new contract comes up, that's when, you know, months earlier the discussion starts. So I encourage you to come and as, as you can be a part of those meetings where we're having the conversations about what the new contract looks like, what other options are. Um, it helps to have con you know, the conversation not just amongst ourselves, but amongst folks in the community who are impacted you know, by, by what the decisions are made. So um, again, it's, it's long term, just like anything yeah. would be. It's not immediate, but it's how we you know, make the best future we can. So Yeah, I mean, well, long term is how we prevent this meeting from happening okay. two years from yeah, now. Exactly. So I mean, it's time to do something. That's basically what we might Thank opinion, you. So. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks You're welcome. Thanks to our attention. Anything else on the public uh, agenda that's not on the warned agenda? All right. Let's move on with the appointment of the uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission transportation appointee. We have two candidates. Uh, one is Doug Greeson, and the other is Mike Hedges. Uh, is there of these? They're both. They're both. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's start with Doug. Evening. So I've started as Waterbury's representative on the Regional Planning Commission, been able to attend a meeting, a couple of Zoom meetings, that sort of thing. Um, earlier, when I became that representative, there was a discussion about me also serving on the Transportation Committee, and I was reluctant to do that because I was sort of, what am I getting into? Mm -hmm. And now that I've got a little taste of it, I think I could do it and do a good job. The, the specific area of my background that I didn't really bring up when I met with you earlier was the several years I spent on the community advisory group for what turned into a $175 million bridge project in Seattle through a, an impoverished community. And they were social and economic justice issues as well as um, construction issues for a complex drawbridge on very poor soil. So it was a very interesting experience. Um, a lot of interaction with communities, um, regulatory bodies, engineers, um, and some of that is applicable on the Transportation Committee. I also probably have one of the more com histories, complex histories of commuting that you can have. My commute involved a bus, a ferry boat, walking, and a car back and forth both ways. Uh, so I got my fill of public transportation and enjoyed it. So that's a part, an attitude that I can bring to this. And for what it's worth, it looks as though about a third of the positions on the Transportation Committee are held by representatives on the um, Regional Planning Commission, mm -hmm. which is an interesting number, but I don't think it means much in that um, it seems to work both ways. And there are plenty of things for me to do on the Planning Commission if you end up choosing someone else tonight for the Transportation Committee. There's a lot of things I can do there as well. Right. Any questions for me? Any further questions? I, just, I remember asking you last time if you would do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, well, I, we all got to take our time. Well, I, I I'm reluctant to sign up for something I don't think I might yeah. do a good job of. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Uh, and Mike. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Hedges. I've uh, lived in town uh, 27 years, I think. I uh, lived in a neighboring town for another 13 before that. I'm a retired professional engineer. Um, I've done a number of things here in the community. I probably was on the Conservation Commission longer than any other person, almost 30, almost 20 years. Um, I, after Irene, I worked in the steering committee for the Cross Connector uh, Trail. Uh, I'm on the steering committee now for the Green Mountain Byway. Um, and as when I was on um, the Conservation Commission, I was really the one that pushed to make Waterbury part of that Green Mountain Byway uh, because I wanted to bring attention to the uh, Shootsville Hill Wildlife Corridor. Um, 
and I've got a fair amount of transportation background as well. I've worked with the Agency of Transportation for 41 years. So I had uh, bridge construction experience, roadway design, uh, traffic design, bridge design, uh, all those types of things. But my last 25 years, I was uh, fortunate enough to be in a management positions where uh, for 13 years I ran the agency's uh, paving program. So about $100 million a year trying to decide uh, what to do with a very limited amount of money across the state, 3,200 two-lane miles. So we, you know, we looked at it as a network that, um, you know, you can do preventive maintenance, you can do regular maintenance, you, may, you have to do some more heavy-duty things like what we're seeing out here where they're removing slabs and that type of thing. <clears throat> and then um, for another 10 years, I was the state's bridge engineer. So uh, I had a lot of experience uh, there with bridges. Again, another $100 million a year. Uh, I was testifying before legislature on both of those assignments. And uh, I was uh, the bridge engineer during Irene. Uh, so uh, there was a, a lot of attention on that position then. And my last five years with the state, I uh, was in asset management. And so we were making decisions as to what types of projects to trigger, how to budget them, and you know where do you get the best, uh, what, how do you prioritize and get the best bang for your buck, that type of thing. And that was a $500 million um, budget that I was working with. And um, <clears throat> I was tasked with coming up with a budget system that was used by rail, air, uh, public transit, those folks, and I was able to help them put their budgets together. So I, I an extensive career with uh, the Agency of Transportation. And, um, you know, there's things I'd like to see through. I've been communicating with the project engineer on the Stowe Street Bridge. Um, you know, I recognize that there's, uh, I, I hired the guy, so I, he, uh, but I've given him some local, local intel as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, that we need, we have needs for sidewalks. I think the link uh, bus system works great if you're trying to go to Burlington, but it doesn't work if you want to go to Montpelier. The hours just don't work. So there's, there's things I think that uh, we could do. Um, last week's TAC meeting I attended with Steve, and so I helped uh, host the group here in Waterbury and showed them a lot of the features and that type of thing. And um, I was kind of surprised. I knew half of the members from that uh, showed up for the TAC as people that I've worked with or consultants and like. So there are, yes, uh, quite a number of people that are, uh, represent uh, planning commissions and that type of thing. But there's a lot of uh, civilians or whatever as well. And um, so I think um, you know I have an interest in it, a, a career in it, and I'd like to try to do more for the town. Any questions? No, just, I mean, uh, irrelevant, but not a question. Just thank you also for your work volunteering since the flood. And it's been much appreciated and, evi you know, evidence of how much you do care about the community. So yep. just want to spread the gratitude. Yeah. Well, it was, it was gratifying to do it as well. So thank you. May I say one thing? Sure. If I were on the select board, I'd be voting for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't got an easy one yet. <laughs> I, I, know, I know Mike is a pretty impressive resume. <laughs> Uncle. <laughs> Do we have a motion? All right. Well, I was going to start by thanking Doug for <laughs> leaping into his role at CBRPC and say that my general mantra is having more incredibly qualified folks that I had no idea lived in our communities <laughs> and also sprayed concrobium and did a million other things. Um, it's just incredible folks who are willing to volunteer. So recognizing that you are already volunteering, Doug, um, as the CBRPC prep, I would move to appoint Mike Hedges as Waterbury's representative to the Transportation Advisory Committee for the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. I, <laughs> I second that motion. All right, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Thank you both. Mm -hmm. Thank you both for volunteering. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, let's put it to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
any abstentions. All right. All right. Congratulations. Thank you for serving. Thank, Thank you. you. And we look forward to bridge updates. Sorry. Yeah. I, I was half joking, but 2025 is correct, right, for the So Street? Well. We've had a, the agency had a lot of luck with closing down bridges and reducing the amount of right of way and stream impacts and that sort of thing. So I think it's great that the town decided to close the bridge. But uh, you know, there's still the ac uh, pedestrian access around it, the parking for when they do have to shut down the parking lot. Uh, there's issues out there, but I think right of way is going to be the big one. Uh, there's some pretty big impacts there. Thank you. All right, let's move on to an update from Wasi. Okay. Yes, please. <clears throat> Hello. I'm Maggie Burke. I'm Waterbury Ambulance's Executive Director. Um, you might have seen me here with Mark, our former Executive Director before. I started with Waterbury Ambulance in 2011 as a volunteer. Um, my background is in nonprofit management. Um, I started full-time with Waterbury Ambulance in 2020, and when Mark passed away suddenly in October of last year, our Executive Director, I stepped in as interim and moved into the Executive Director position after a search was conducted. Uh, a quick background on Waterbury Ambulance. We've been around for 53 years as a nonprofit organization unaffiliated with the municipality. Um, we cover about 100 square miles. We are 24 7 911 response. We go on about 800 calls a year. Um, currently, that makeup, which is a little change, is about 27% of what we do is inter facility or home transfers for patients, so bringing people from one hospital to another or home for hospice. We provide backcountry rescue, community trainings like CPR, first aid, stop the bleed. We do car seat fittings, and we also do other community responses during COVID-19. We provided 80,000 80, vaccinations and 200,000 COVID tests. So the state asked us to help, and we stepped up, and we're covering a lot of our region and throughout the state with a team that we created of over 200 employees. Um, most recently, we have a couple new projects we're gonna be working on with the state. One is helping identify and inventory needs of the folks who uh, are experiencing homelessness or um, housing insecurity. Uh, the folks that lost their motel vouchers, we're gonna be doing some community, um, community service of checking in with those folks and seeing what needs they have that need to be met over the next little bit. As well as just last week, we were reached out to by the Deputy Commissioner of Public Safety to help with some of the flood relief by helping be a conduit uh, between those folks who might not be getting their needs met in our community and in small, smaller rural communities around us, using that impact that we had from COVID to build upon that, um, as well as trying not to duplicate what's currently happening. So we're gonna be reaching out and figuring out what needs aren't being met and what we can do to move forward in the future, not just for Waterbury, but for those smaller communities around us that might not have as big a team as here serving them. Um, some changes we've had recently over the last few years is a decrease in volunteerism. You might be hearing that nationwide. Younger folks are having a harder time volunteering, which has increased the per diem staff that we've put on. So on any given day of our 24 hours recovering, there's at least one paid person on our truck at any given moment. Um, that has increased our response time out the door. We're four minutes out the door. Just three years ago, that time was seven minutes out the door. So folks are responding less from home, more from our facility. We increased to a paramedic level service on Sunday, June 11th. So great timing with the flooding, but we worked on an application with the state. We hired our first paramedic in um, April, Peter Fitz. So he's gonna be our operations director and that's gonna allow us to provide a higher level of care to Waterbury, including narcotic pain management, better cardiac evaluation. Um, in general, when we've needed a paramedic in the past, we've had to call for one from Barrytown during the 48 hours that we'll currently have someone on now, we'll no longer have to do that. There's also an increased ability for us to bill at that level of care, so it's also kind of an increased revenue stream. If available, we'll also be able to send that person from mutual aid to other towns uh, eventually. So we've got a fly car that was donated from Twin City Subaru or 802 Subaru, so that's where that person will be running out of. Um, we've seen an increase in cost of medical supplies, fuel, all the same things that I think other industries are seeing. And when we look at our budget, it's not a super pretty picture. We are looking at a negative $130,000 operating budget plan for this year. However, because of <clears throat> the COVID response that we've done 
and the impact of that that we ended a couple months ago, we're only at a negative $5,000 mark right now. So we're still doing okay, given what we projected. However, uh, we won't have that COVID income, but like I said, with those increase in inter-facility transfers that we're doing, as well as some of these community response things that we're doing, the state will reimburse us for. So we're doing our best to take care of ourselves without having to come to the different towns that we serve to ask for additional appropriation money, but know that we are not, we don't have a great financial picture looking forward. The big exciting news to talk about tonight is our building project. Um, we had plans to break ground in June of this year at our site on Route 100. We were working with Copley Hospital with their Mansfield Orthopedics Clinic. The plan was for, they purchased the property and we were gonna purchase a piece of that property in order to build on. We put the project out to bid in April. Um, it was a little bit delayed due to permits. We wanted to make sure we had all of our permits in place and then as well as Copley got some USDA loans, which took a little bit of time to get in place. When the bids came back they, in May, they came back at a million dollars over what had been projected for the project. Most of that being site work costs, so moving dirt, as well as a fire suppression system, which was $600,000. So we'd have to put in a 25,000 gallon tank because there's no access to municipal water at that site. So really between the site work and the fire suppression system, it was $1.7 million of our you know, $3.4 million project. So the building committee chose to take a pause and reevaluate the project and say, you know, this seems like an inappropriate use of donor funds if we go out and raise another million dollars just to move dirt um, and put in a fire suppression system. And we surveyed our friends in town, spoke with Tom, and we actually were able to identify a site in town across the street from Subway behind the Sunoco station. Um, formerly, I guess, part of the Pilgrim Park, you, you know, it's owned by Wayne Lamberton and his um, business. We were told by pretty much everyone that they wouldn't sell because they don't sell properties very often, <laughs> but they said because it was Waterbury Ambulance, they would be willing to sell to us. Um, the purchase price of the property was about $100,000 more than what we had for the other piece of property, but there's a potential to maybe subdivide that piece of property and sell to a neighbor who is interested in um, purchasing it. So we, did, we also, in that whole process, we did do value engineering. I kind of missed that part. We tried to go back through and see what we could take out. I've got some beautiful brochures that have some great masonry and things on that. We got rid of all of those things, tried to do whatever we could to really bring the cost down on the building and couldn't get them to a point where we were comfortable. Currently, we're in a preliminary research phase. So we're looking at the, um, we're looking with a civil engineer and with the architect to see if our current structure will fit on that site. Right now, it's looking like it will. Um, there is some flood mitigation. Obviously, that's a hot topic right now. Part of the property is in the floodplain, and we didn't actually get a great picture of what that looked like during this flood because the culvert behind it was clogged. And so all the water got redirected. So we did see that it did not flood terribly during this time. But what we would do is actually lift the building up um, a bit to mitigate that. <clears throat> and the portion that we would have most of our living area in is not technically in the floodplain. As, but like I said, we're still looking at it to make sure that it is something that's going to work for us. Um, some of the challenges we have is that we've ordered a brand new ambulance that is supposed to come in. One of the ones we have is limping along right now a bit with increased costs due to that limping and the current technology of truck is not like we're ordering something that's super expensive or um, outside of the norm and it won't fit in our current bay and it's supposed to arrive in the fall. So we're trying to figure out what we do, where we can put that truck you know, until we get to a new site. But we also figured taking this pause and looking at this new property, this is a project that's going to influence us for the next 70 years. Why put ourselves out of business or you know, put ourselves in a financial strain to continue looking at the site that we're currently looking at versus taking a minute to pause and look into the future. So there's definitely going to be a lot of work that we have to put into it. Um, the other piece that's pretty hard for us is that we don't have adequate facilities for our current staff. So right now there's no sleeping facilities, no laundry facilities, no beds, and we have folks on call there 24 hours a day. So it's definitely, we're asking a lot of our providers who are in a building that's built by high school students in the 1970s. They did a really wonderful job uh, for the 1970s. We're really grateful for this space and we're really grateful to Waterbury for allowing us to be in that space. 
but we need to figure out a way to move forward um, to build for our future and to become a, you know, to have a, a facility that meets the same quality of care that we're providing to our community. So, any questions? I'm ready. <laughs> Do you have a, uh, a timeline uh, for when you expect to close on the property? Or? Yeah, we're, we're going to do a um, intention to purchase, so we wouldn't purchase without all permits in hand, and Wayne is willing to give us that um, ability to make that decision. The hope would be to purchase the property and build starting in the spring. Spring 24. Correct. Yeah. Like, just a quick, quick question. Um, what response, I know, because I, I used to be a program director at USDA Rural Development, mm -hmm. uh, in the community facilities program, uh, did you get a, because I know they have a, both a loan and grant. I, I don't know where Waterbury stands now in terms of what your eligibility, but have you looked into? I did. Okay. Yeah, Good. there was a timeline with that one where you had to be shovel ready in order to put it in but we weren't quite in the spot. So the timeline didn't work out at that point for the project. Where we do stand with our fundraising is we're at, for a $3.4 million goal, we're $200,000 away from that. And we think that's attainable. Uh, that being said, who knows what the additional costs? You know, we've done some evaluation of what the loss in moving sites will be in terms of work already done or permits already paid for will be, but it still seems like it's less than the $1.7 million. But I do anticipate probably our budget going up from $3.4 million mm -hmm. as we go down the future, go and down this line. Use the congressional offices, have them put pressure, that will help you. Correct, yeah, absolutely. And we've been amazingly amazed by Tom's um, support of the project. He's been checking in with us and helping in whatever way he can and helping guide us through the process. Any other questions? I'd like to ask one thing. Yeah. So you're potentially thinking about building the same building down here that you were up there? Correct. Um, what was it about the site costs up there that, was there any specific aspect of the site costs that were Overwhelming. Yeah. It, it, and how how does that differ from the two sites? Yeah. So the site there is flat. It's on municipal water, which is huge. Um, and it's, you know, it's not. We don't know that it's built ready, but the site we were at, we had to build a road, bring all the utilities up it, and then we had to do a significant amount of groundwork. You know, in terms of flattening the space and getting a lot of dirt had to be moved out of the space and there was some in the value engineering we found other places to put some of that dirt but it really was a lot of I'm not gonna give a, someone from my team who knows a little bit more would give a better answer but it was just a significant amount of moving dirt yeah, yeah. well that's what I do for a living there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no way and the other piece is so so much higher yeah and we are planning when we move to this new site to put the project back out to bid um, to a few different construction companies um, for the overall project. I mean, to think that, I don't know how long it's been, but uh, it was before Irene when we rebuilt the two fire stations and we rebuilt both of those for 3.25 million or right. less, less than that. And now you're looking at over, you know, you're saying that obviously you're thinking that the cost is going to be in excess of what your target is right now, so that puts it in the four million plus probably category. Hopefully not, because the <coughs> building that we're building is decently modest. You know, we're not putting in anything that's. Yeah, but you said you had to. What was your target? Your your. Three point four million okay. is the target, and it came back at four point <coughs> six, and the majority of that increase was it was predicted to be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of groundwork, and it came back at nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of groundwork. So that was really the number that put us over the edge of saying, you know, we kind of expected with increased labor costs there to be some sort of increase, but that number just seemed inappropriate to, to move forward with. Yeah. And we're just being good stewards of our donors' money. We want to make sure that we're making the right choices, even if we have to pause. Okay. Um, about your truck, your new one. Yeah. That you need storage for. Have you or we reached out? <laughs> it, it certainly has been talked about, but we're full. Okay. Yeah. Um, the ambulance has, when, when we're in the process of 
building, uh, we weren't merged as a town and a village at that point. Right. And the fire chief in the town, David Jennison, had said, look, we will have one bay that we're planning for the future. And the, at, at that point, the back country could put their truck in there. Mm -hmm. and, but now they have their truck, and they have their trailer, and they have some other stuff. Right. Um, so we really just don't have any room. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> there is also a, we keep a lot of supplies and equipment, so every time we go on a call, we have to come back and restock our truck. It has to be heated. And especially moving to the medic level service, we're going to have some, you know, drugs that we want to make sure are appropriately locked up. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, that definitely has come across, but it would be a challenge to be restocking that truck from as far away as even the Maple Street station, but do doable given put in a crunch. So, mm -hmm. and, and on, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, and Gary's obviously going to be a supporter of this. Yeah, uh, you know, with their backcountry pickup, I don't want to say it's not an emergency, but there's time. Right. So it's behind our smallest truck, uh, our smallest engine, mm -hmm. and they can pull that out because it's a smaller automatic, pull their pickup out, put our truck back in. Um, if it's an ambulance, that is more emergent, mm -hmm. um, and that's going to take time. And we certainly can't put it in front of the fire truck because then we've got to move an ambulance before we pull a fire truck out. Right. It logistically, from my perspective, having an ambulance in there isn't the ideal solution. Okay. Uh, Backcountry truck, it's working. Yeah. All right. Any further questions? Yeah, Alyssa. I was just going to say thank you. It's just clear how much work goes into this, and I just really appreciate that you all are being such thoughtful stewards and recognizing that it's probably hard news that no one wants to hear, but just um, you just provide so much value to the community. So just wanted to say thank you. The fact that this, you know, we essentially have a municipal annual service through you all, though you're a private nonprofit, being very clear, <laughs> don't want to confuse anyone. Right. Um, but just it's really appreciated. So thank you for the update, and yeah. we'll stay in touch. And I would also just say our fellow uh, E. Edward for our utility district commissioners are probably thrilled that you're trying to be on municipal water. So. Mm -hmm. I would just like to add a, a personal thank you for having that testing site rolling for that good chunk of the pandemic there. It was definitely useful to me and it was useful to the Waterbury Center community. Uh, and you guys were there the whole time. Mm -hmm. So big, big gratitude. Yeah. Pass that along. They boosted crew. me today. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Good. And Zach already called about how to coordinate volunteers. <laughs> it really does happen in real time about how to. Maggie, uh, thanks for the update. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming in. Congratulations on finding a, what looks like a good solution. Yeah, I'll leave you here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next on the agenda is an uh, update on the housing task force. Hold on, I just, I, I'm entering notebook three in my two years. Wow. I didn't think I'd be publicly celebrating, but here we are. Um, now I have to get my housing task force agenda. Um, so we met, um, this will just be an incredibly brief update just so folks, here it is, I put it in the new agenda. Um, so that folks know what's happening. Um, the group is now meeting on the third Thursday from six to eight. Um, just mostly the credit should go to our chair, Joe, who has just been a total uh, data researcher and just done a really big deep dive on what you, work would be useful. Um, I will say the group talked about the flood and impacts on housing, just acknowledging that there were both short-term emergent needs and that as housing is getting rehabbed, um, that it's just something impacting the housing stock in Waterbury, so we want to be aware with it. It felt like the general takeaway was that the flood recovery coordinator position and Tom would probably continue to be the, Tom Drake, be the front um, lines of that, but folks could engage if they were interested. Um, the three pieces that the housing task force was looking at moving forward with it was updating housing data from the um, municipal plan. Our municipal plan is dated 2018. The housing data is actually from 2010, and we just talked about it has changed literally in the past month. So there are already the group has already done a read through of state and federally available data and saying let's make sure we have the updated numbers and then we can tweak that even more with what we know on the ground. Um, some work on 
looking at where available places are to build more housing before we're doing work on um, kind of knowing the playing field, so to speak. Um, Mark Pamelio does some of this work in the economic development world, but kind of in the same world of housing, where can we put housing? Um, and then looking at talking with folks who do the actual housing development, um, both on the kind of nonprofit and for-profit sphere and starting a conversation to say, what could we do to help make creating more housing in Waterbury possible for you? Um, and then the last piece I would say is we talked about public support um, around zoning um, and just knowing that another piece of our work is bylaw updates and again we know the planning commission was already working on that um, they've updated us on that but there's certainly overlaps in that world and housing and just recognizing that making sure those are clear when we talk about um, zoning updates is important I think that's it those were our big next steps we're having a working meeting if anyone wants to come in and dig into data on the third Thursday in August <laughs> Further comment on the housing task force update. All right. Also, thank you very much. Really credit to Joe. I just can't give Joe enough credit for how much homework yeah, crap he did for the chair. meeting. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. The guy's a homework champion. <laughs> um, the uh, next thing on the agenda is uh, the decision on the dog bite hearing uh, at uh, our meeting on the 17th of July. Uh, we did ha hold a hearing uh, on uh, the dog bite, uh, which our uh, animal control officer was not able to resolve. Uh, we heard from both the, the uh, owner of the dog in question and uh, the budding landowner uh, took testimony. Uh, since then, we've entered uh, private deliberations uh, on this issue and uh, went and did a site visit uh, to look at the, uh, at the house in question. Um, and uh, based on that, uh, we did come up with uh, a decision uh, earlier today and uh, we will be directing the town manager to issue a letter to the owner of the dog uh, with uh, our decision on uh, proper restraint and that letter will be out within two days. Any further questions from the board? You're not detailing what the restraint is? Uh, no, we figure that uh, that will be uh, in the letter. Uh, it'll be clear uh, what the requirements are. Um, Melissa, do you want to add something? Yeah, I would just say we will issue a letter giving the conditions for this specific dog hearing that we had, which go beyond just restraint. So there's the conditions for the owner of this particular dog to resolve the dispute we took testimony on. As two pieces of general information, Waterbury has an existing leash law that applies to all dogs in town that will also apply to this owner. And also, as you, Karen, were kind enough to find for us, per state law, yeah. everyone also needs to have, um, dogs must have uh, collars with tags mm -hmm. um, at all residents. So I guess I would say that, yeah, we will issue that, which does include restraint, but also includes other conditions for this particular thing in writing. Um, and general FYI for all, just around restraint per the leash law and collars. And we'll be asking to revisit this in three months. For this specific case. Um, I, may I speak? Sure. D because I did, as you well all know, I sent an email to the owner and all the individuals that were here in attendance that night just to alert them to the item on the agenda. So. Um, with the exception of uh, Jordan, everyone wrote back and said, you know, I can't be in attendance, but please let me know what their decision was. So I guess my ask is, will we be sending those letter, the letter that sh that Amy receives, will that be something similar drafted to those people, or how are we relaying to them, the, the neighbors, yeah. your decision? I mean, Tom, Tom lights. yeah, can we CC them? Is it a memo? Memo regarding 
next steps actions sent to the person and CCing all the property owners like you would for like a DRB decision? Sure, I'm, I'm asking you all. Yeah, uh, yes. that's, what that's what I had envisioned, but maybe no, I'm that's what I suggest as well. Tom, Tom we can't Tom's hear you. To that. <laughs> Tom, we can't hear you. He's not. He's, he's not. <laughs> do that. Okay. So we will issue a copy to uh, the budding landowners and other interested parties. Okay. All right. We can coordinate with uh, prior to the posting of your minutes so that you have it all ready to go. Okay. That's then, great. Right, because yeah. you have, yeah. And what do we have on uh, the next meeting agenda so far? Oh. <laughs> well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember anything I we talked remember. about. And I can go grab one of my desktop if that's if you have. If you yeah. wouldn't mind, that would be a lot easier yeah. than, than Our brains are testing not. a bunch of uh, <laughs> tired brain cells. We started for um, the two meetings in August. You're so off. Ah, that's perfect. Okay, because Karen's going to go away. Great. Mm -hmm. Karen's away. Also right. for August. Yes, so. yes. Um, try to keep um, the light. As a general statement pertaining to WASI, just Mike and I were muttering about it over here, but um, Mike, because he ran USDA and I now do USDA grants for work, um, towns can be grant eligible or loan eligible. Grants are obviously great, free money, but it's based on socioeconomic. So Waterbury is only loan eligible. Um, uh -huh. So just to say they can get loans to help, but their goal in the whole project was not right. to have Let's loans. Um, just to say, Maggie's certainly doing her homework with regards to oh, yeah what grants where they can apply for and be eligible for and unfortunately just not all of them apply well and they've had a, a very successful fundraiser oh enormous uh, so i think she may be right that uh, finding the remaining two hundred thousand dollars would be possible feasible mm -hmm. of course we do have part of the money still but uh, we don't, there may be other demands on that or at the time, there was discussion of an EFA loan. Not, I mean, sorry, UDAG loan. Not that it's our purview. If you know, if they're connecting to water. Right. Um, yes, true. Yeah, we can, we can talk to the EFA uh, municipal manager about that. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing other important things with the funding too. I don't mean to pressure. Yeah, so I want to see that about loan. Um, and I think the loan is probably last resort. Yeah. Uh, um, but we'll have to see where the final numbers come in. With the last project, the loan wasn't, I didn't have enough money to get them over the finish line if we wanted to. Karen, it's on paper in front of us. It's phenomenal. Wait, I get two? Yeah. Well, there's two meetings in August. I'll be here for neither. Uh, so I thought as long as we're all together, yeah, without you. if you have anything to add, it will make Beth's life that much more. Thank okay. you. Um, public works update. How extensive do we expect that to be? Yeah. 20 minutes? I, I can work out the dates uh, and the times. Bill Woodruff is on vacation. Okay. okay. Good for him. So yeah. not, maybe a different uh, date maybe for that? Maybe 21. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill is, Woody is back on, oh, yeah, right before the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Give too. him some time. Yeah. yeah. Just move it to the next. All right, so move to okay, 21st. So move that to the 21st. Mm -hmm. Yep. Introducing Katerina. Typo note on her name. Yeah. Katerina. <laughs> Told you they were really raw. That's hard to find. She is out next week, too. She's out next week as well? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, I guess she moves to the 21. All right, can we get uh, three strikes on this? Uh, <laughs> is the SC group going to be ready? Steve uh, and the study committee meet this Thursday. And I believe on their agenda is adoption, at, or sorry, recommendation of the final study to you. Uh -huh. So I can check with the SC group if they'll be ready on, on Monday uh, to present. Okay. So Joe leave that one on until further notice. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, it's a foul tip. Um, <laughs> the, uh, 
uh, uh, yeah, so then you're not going to be here? I won't be here on the 7th, so okay, I'm so not mad know. about all this moving. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyone else have suggestions? Um, the committee that I suggested. Yeah, I had yes. flood response. Flood response committee. Flood response committee? Yeah. Or natural disaster. Is one natural, res res disaster. natural disaster response committee. Also, hey. listen. Uh, so a document was started at the beginning of all this. Um, I'm not sure if it got widely publicized or used yet, but um, I haven't looked at it in a little while. But I know myself and a few others went into a Google Doc where we jotted down notes that were long-term ideas. Send them to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a conversation. Oh, okay. You might want to just a committee on the seventh, or do we want to start talking about? longer term ideas too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say yeah. I would argue we should have flood response as an agenda item. It could be both like short or as an agenda heading and you could have like Tom Drake's imminent. What are the volunteers doing? Mm -hmm. I still would love some sort of after action review. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's too soon. I didn't. I felt like this got alluded to when Kane's idea came up, but like right. The what worked well, dumpsters worked well again, and Danny's point of getting that out of people's brains and onto paper to the extent it's appropriate to do that in a public meeting as opposed to a different venue that could be on. Yep. Tom's lights, oh, sorry, the two Toms, mm -hmm. the long term ideas for us to prioritize, and then Kane's as one of those ideas. Yours can be much more flushed out of here's a whole <laughs> specific thing on the I committee. Mean, we can also, you know, combine com combined and conquer. You know, if we, it would be much easier to expedite going forward if all the ideas, you know, for future happenings were thrown into one pot. Kane, you may want to take a look because we have an approved local emergency measure. I've read it. You've read that? Yeah, and it got thrown out the window this last time around, so <laughs> yeah. well, it's time to do. Yeah. And some pieces <laughs> didn't, and that's a good dialogue <laughs> to have. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Um, so that's yeah. an hour. <laughs> well, and well, and there's also uh, mitigation. Uh, right. Uh, right. Right. So maybe just response in general. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it would be helpful to itemize these just so that we cover those bases and, right, and right, right. decide which fit into yeah. the type of work that you're talking about and maybe things that fit into other, uh, other administrative slots. Right. Agreed. The like who is doing what and right. responsibilities and do yeah. we have enough staff to cover it? Does it become a Tom Drake? Does it become Tom Lights? Do right. we have other needs? You know, mm -hmm. that could be. Yeah, I think all of those are worth uh, discussing at the next meeting. I'm sorry, Danny won't be there. But, Me too. Uh, I'll type up as much as I can before then. Okay. Sorry, Don Rachel. May I just review what I think I heard? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So there's a agenda item called flood response, and then there's more or less three bullet points. One is flood recovery coordinator update, natural disaster response committee, and mitigation. That sounds right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just yeah. wanted to make sure that I, I got it all. Okay. Thank you. So, and we're leaving SC group for the time being. For the time being, As yep. first on the agenda? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, public first. Well, public's mm -hmm. always first. If we don't have staff, I feel less bad. If Woody was doing a presentation, I was going to propose we let Woody go first. Yeah. But. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do it that way. We'll do uh, SE first, and then we'll... Uh, oh, I guess we have... Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we won't have Karen. We have Tom we'll Lights is along for the ride. Tom Drake would be the other. How long he wants to spend. Oh, well, you can put flood response stuff first and keeping with the theme from the last mm -hmm. six weeks, and, and then SE group afterwards. I. Do we want to... Um, oh, you know what else I haven't shared? Yeah. Sorry, your um, your uh, damn audit reports are on my desk. Oh, oh. that's from you though. Everybody's very excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we Tom, want to do this I next week. I think Tom knew that they came in last week when you were away, mm -hmm. and they're still sitting there. We want to do any significant findings. I didn't even open. <laughs> oh. But I'm happy support. to share them before you all go. You Thank can you. take them home. Um, but they are yeah, they're on my desk. Okay, so that would have to be on the agenda as well. Um, I was going to ask for uh, going back over um, flood response and where we're at, what we're doing next. Do we want to invite Lish Slagle? 
Uh, certainly, it would be helpful to get her right. take on what worked well and what could have worked better. Yes. Who's um, inviting Lish Schlegel? I, I, I can. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess the question, too, is like, are we doing the after action in the meeting? Because I would also argue we should invite Woody, Tom. Oh, you're right. Um, if we're doing like a whole thing. I know. So maybe it's like not really, the right thing. Yeah. Let's then let's, let's move it out. Let's just move that one. We'll yeah, we can do long term. Report. We can do yeah. long term and mitigation and do after action somewhere else. I think sooner than it'd be good to encourage folks and yeah. maybe we review it at a later meeting. <laughs> Yeah, I just think we should get long term on the road right now so we can get there sooner. All right, so we'll do after action review on the 21st. Um, if we're going to cut it down, let's do this uh, flood uh, response first uh, with. Tom Drake's report, and then we can do the SE group. SE groups are not going to be short. There's going to be right. a lot of input. Uh, I think we can probably get through this in 20 minutes or so, um, and then move on to SE group. Does that sound all right? Mike? Just as a note, on the 21st, I may or may not be here because of its post-surgery. Mm. Oh. Oh. So, okay. So the knees moving I, forward? I, I might be on, um, depending upon how mobile I am, I may be on, you know. Maybe they'll give you one of those little scooters. How mobile, how medical? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think what they already talked about either walkers or crutches or stuff like that. I said, I think I could use my ski pole. <laughs> oh, so they'll do surgery and you can still walk on it? Depends upon, wow. yeah. It's got to be a very little need. Yeah. So yeah. They, they want you to exercise as much Cyborg as possible. Need. Yeah. But, you know, they have, they have a whole exercise plan for you. I'm ready, ready doing the pre-exercises. Um, just in terms of other things, I'm just saying out loud that I'm seeing on the 21st we have the presentation of the charter to the public. Does that still feel realistic? Um, we also have this question about a meeting during Labor Day. Um, and then, I guess, in light of tonight, do we think we need a public safety agenda item at either of these meetings? I mean, it seems like the most imminent concerns are things Tom is triaging as manager, um, but from uh, us, big picture planning and response. Yeah. Um, are we ready for the charter presentation? Well, it was for the 21st. Right. I just realized how much we just moved on to the 21st, right. so I just right. wanted to raise that. When we do that presentation, I would hope it's not rushed. <laughs> I think there's going to be a significant public input on that. Agree. Uh -huh. mm. Well, I think we can get through. How long does a public works update usually take? And then Katrina's intro should only take 10 minutes, 15 right. minutes. Let's decide that at the next meeting. Okay. <laughs> and a little on the charter. Mm -hmm. um, I have a meeting this Wednesday. Um, with uh, RW um, about their, uh, their WAD, their Water Barrier Development Committee meeting. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk about the local option tax at that, at that meeting and I understand um, Mark Fryer is pretty keenly interested and is also on that committee and wants to talk about it. Um, so that might inform, um, just depending on, on what happens at that meeting, that might inform the charter conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, in my conversations with Mark Fryer, he seems uh, pro. <laughs> uh, with conditions. Mm -hmm. Pro with conditions, yes. With conditions. Yeah, okay, well, let's just, we'll be updated by then. Okay. Uh, I think we're all set for the agenda. If there are other items, uh, then we can bring them to my attention. Uh, and Tom and I will go over it uh, on Friday morning. Thank you. Are you still here? Friday morning, I'm here. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. I think we've covered it. Uh, Any other items before the board? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Next next session. 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 And my only other. All right. Just to say about um, Martha emailed us about planning commission. Do you think that's worth putting on the agenda? We don't have to invite them, but we could do it on the 7th. 
just they shared a timeline for their rewrite. Right. And some select board questions. I'm just saying if, if we're feeling light for the seventh, but there's always <laughs> zoning. Uh huh. Even though it's 15. Uh -huh. Though if we're doing SE group, I guess I'll wait. I'll wait in when you have the SE group presentation. I'm just saying out loud that that's a thing. Yeah, I did uh, respond to her. She sent, uh, I don't know, everyone was copied on uh, Martha's uh, no, update. Uh, but uh, she has decided, uh, she met with the SE group and uh, decided that uh, the planning commission would meet every week uh, in order to hit their uh, goal of having the uh, zone, zoning regs for phase one completed in time for the public session. And uh, it said that we were uh, excited to get the information and thanked her for her increased uh, level of effort on this. I didn't know that she needed to have anything directly in front of the board at this point. No, not necessarily. I guess I would just say I, as a board member, am aware of the fact that we are rewriting regulations largely for the portion of town that was just flooded mm -hmm. and that I would anticipate that will receive a lot of public dialogue that I'm already receiving. And mm -hmm. so to the extent we need to have board conversations about that to inform the efforts that they're working so hard on, right. um, I would just hate to see all that expedited work wind up somewhere um, where we're not all on the same page. So just making sure we're doing that as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. I, I, but I agree. I don't think it necessitated an immediate. I think that we've got time based on the, the schedule that I saw uh, to address that a little bit down the road when we have more information about what's going on here and what they're developing. All right, uh, do we have a motion to go to move to executive session? So moved. 